Woo! That's hot enough to melt your tonsils out. Well, I'm afraid I might have let y'all down a little bit this week. Um, I'll tell you about it later. I've been really busy. Um, so, unfortunately, the content you're getting this week on the big truck is uh, what I was able to do. Had a pocket full of hopes and dreams of where I would be this week and last week, but got a hole in my pocket. So hopefully next week, week after that, we'll get uh, some real good progress going. Thank you for sticking around. Um, I actually did a lot of recording. It just wasn't on the big truck. It was on other stuff that I'm working on. Um, you'll see all of it at some point in time, and I'll tell you more about some of it here shortly. So I've been trying to get these air tanks ready to prime. I've gone through and marked a bunch of little spots that uh, needed filler. Most of them's been relatively mild. I've just put the very first coat on. So all that is, is pitting and some dings. That one was a, probably a 16th of an inch deep ding. It's got one thin coat on. Now, uh, these guys here, if you'll recall, they were all whomper jawed. One was one way and one was the other. I heated it up quite a bit and got them more or less where they're level. But I'm not confident that they haven't tried to pull loose a little bit around the edge, especially this one. It's got a little bit of a gap there. I think it's still fully welded, but I don't know. So we're gonna go over there and uh, set the welder up and I'm gonna run a bead all the way around both of these. These are both low point drains. This is the uh, the tank that's got two sections. So it's got the little bitty front one. But I'm gonna run a bead around there. I don't wanna take any chance of getting these all primed and painted and having a big old air leak right there. So we'll set up and do that real quick. All right, so I got it set up. So we'll go ahead and uh, start trying to burn this in um you'll have to excuse me i am not a highly skilled welder my hands are not nearly steady enough so i just uh call it quits when i get them stuck together i don't know how well this metal is going to weld either so it's gonna be hard going around the circle it's kind of awkward on the stand here and it's rolly but uh let's talk more work halfway around we'll do this one can you see this one yep you can see it stop laughing I'm trying better than paying someone else to do it maybe Not 
sure why the welder does that sometimes. You pull the trigger and the wire goes out and it hits the metal and pushes the gun away without striking. Doesn't seem to have much to do with the, the um, what am I trying to say? Doesn't seem to have much to do with the amperage or the wire speed or anything like that. I gotta find my brush. I'll clean them off and bring it right back. Trying to get you all in here where you can see where you also won't be in my, my way and or staring at my back. I've done that a lot in my short YouTubing career. This is awkward. Y'all gonna have to move just a little bit. Just a little bit. All right, let's try it again. Which side do I wanna start on? Probably here. The paint's all rolly. That's not helping. It's gonna be ugly. I got it smoky enough. Let's try this one. This one's a little easier to get to. Let's try the other hand. Well, I don't think they're gonna leak air. Ain't gonna win no prizes for beauty, but I think they'll work. Well, it's like I said, they ain't pretty, but they're stuck. And it'll be good enough for this old thing. Now I can go ahead and uh, finish uh, filling in the scratches and whatnot, a few pinholes. Like I said, this is just the first coat. Like that covered completely fine. A Little bit more stuff, a little bit more here tiny ding on the end of there the front of the tanks were rock chipped pretty bad the other end are like flawless so tell which end got the gravel thrown at it i'll mix up some mud and i guess you can watch me do that for a minute well, i told you i wouldn't uh make you watch too much of this uh bondo process on these tanks or uh whole lot of anything else until this project's a little farther along but it is what I'm doing and it is what I'm working on so if you want to watch me work guess what you might have to watch me apply Bondo as boring as that is it's annoying when your uh, work surface is trying to roll around on you what I'm doing right now is just trying to use some pretty firm pressure just push it down into all the pits which are really kind of minor it's more stone chips like i said on this end get it all smashed down in there then i'll make a uh, pass to pretty it up a little if i'm not getting hit in the hand by a, a valve oops that did not look pretty We've got quite enough on the old spreader. That's a little better. That's better. Except for that one spot there. I can deal with that. A little pit there. A little bit here on the face. Okay, that looks pretty good. It pretty much takes care of the 
face of it. There you go. That's better. We'll just call that good enough. I'm gonna mix some more. We'll fill it, fill in a bunch of those spots up through there. I try to work in sections when I'm doing this. I have to just get in my stand here. Ah, okay. Try to work in sections. That way, I'm not uh, missing stuff. I mixed a lot more this time, so have to be a little quicker on the trigger here. Truth be told, I could paint right over most of this stuff, and uh, most people would never even notice that this work was not done. But, some of you probably have already noticed that I do have a bit of an OCD problem with stuff, but it's kind of served my business well, so I'm not going to say that that was anything bad. When you're charging good money for something, you better be delivering good results, you know what I mean? Bondo is going to be trying to harden up on me pretty quick. Got to hurry. Okay. Turn it a little. A little bit more down here. You probably can't see it, but I can see it. Like I said earlier, this is only my second application. So it's really not needed that much stuff. I got a lot of spaces covered, but they're just very, very minor pits. There's only probably three or four dents per tank and uh, two or three sections of decent pitting, but nothing major. More OCD stuff. Guess what? It's me again. What I'm filling in right now are um, imperfections from where it sat on the uh, bracket that the air tank hung on. Namely, a uh, big groove you see there that the cable kind of put in it so thoughtfully. So we're gonna just kind of squish it in there. Goes all the way about 75% of the way around the tank. Just gonna get it pushed down in there. And then I'm gonna try and drag it all the way around, or at least that far around. I'm going to have a hard time getting all this on the truck before it uh, sets up. All right, a little bit more down here. Okay. I can fill in a bunch of this small stuff. Oh, yeah, I'm going to have some of this set up on the board. See how quick I can move. Not going to be quick enough, I don't think. Feel like something biting my leg. There ain't nothing biting my leg. I don't know why I mixed this much. I knew I didn't need it. Nope, I got a big divot here I can fill. Probably out of frame for you. Let's see. Don't got a whole lot left. Have very little time. Starting to kind of try to glaze over a little. I 
I've been piddling with uh, about 38 different ways of coating the bolts that I'm going to put in the semi-truck frame for all the fuel tank brackets and everything else that I end up restoring. I've tried different kinds of paints, uh, metal proof coatings, the zinc stuff you saw uh, a couple of weeks ago, whenever that was. Um, this one here is actually an exhaust coating. It's a real thin aerosol paint. You spray it on there, real light coat, and then you bake the thing at like 400, 450 degrees, and it turns it into a kind of a flat grayish black kind of look, kind of similar to like a black phosphate look, which would have been very similar to what the bolts were originally when it was new. So I have yet to bake one of the actual truck bolts. So again, hope to have that done and I didn't, but that's been the explanation for the delay in uh, putting the tank brackets and all that stuff back on. This is a uh, paint with a special kind of a, and almost like a rubberized coating on it. This looks pretty good. So it's either gonna probably be this finish or the baked uh, black, which I'll show you next week. Well, we've reached the uh, time of the show where uh, we gotta start making this thing look a little less like a truck, unfortunately. She's come to the end of the road. Starting tonight, well, I guess starting back when they pulled the engine out of it and before that when they crashed it, but I guess continuing tonight, we gotta take some stuff off. I'm just gonna start peeling off the stuff that's easy and probably start with the grill. Anything that, you know, I don't want a tree to fall on or anything I can get off easy. So the big thing I'm gonna have to get off, which is not gonna be tonight, it's gonna be dark. I gotta pop this transmission off of here. It's not gonna be hard. Just put a few bolts through it and uh, throw something around back there and just find a spot to put it. I got plans for the chassis and the frame. It doesn't involve a semi truck, but haven't decided what I'm gonna do with the cab. I'm gonna take most of the interior panels out, probably pull the doors off. Cab, I don't know. Might cut it up. I don't know. Maybe give it away to somebody that can use it for a doghouse or a chicken coop, something like that. Anything that's salvageable that I can potentially reuse and save, I'm gonna do that, obviously. Um, so all this stuff here, the trim, the doors, pull handles, those doors, the vents, the glass, visor, uh, pretty much anything that'll unbolt easily. I don't want to, I don't want to get rid of anything that I could potentially want later. I got to start tearing the thing down because I've been doing a bunch of, uh, brush cleanup, a ton of work out here, which I got to tell you more about that while we're working. But we'll go ahead and uh, get set up and get busy before it gets dark. Got about 30 minutes before it's pitch black. What's up? So, trying out my new uh, mic. My wife bought me this. I think it'll work cool, but I'm not going to know if I lost my audio till we're done. So, if that happens, I'll voice over the whole thing. Uh, James Pretty was telling me about these and. They're kind of a lot smarter than me, I think. But let's get busy. Now I don't have to yell at you with this mic on. I wish there was like a little light on the camera where you could tell if it was recording audio or not. But there ain't. So, I've been really, really struggling here lately. Um, Trying to come up with enough content to keep you all busy, you know what I mean? And the, one of the reasons why is because this time of the year, I'm incredibly busy with outside stuff and, you know, just normal work. But we wound up uh, buying a big chunk of property from my neighbors. And, um,. It's been abandoned, more or less, uh, probably 15 acres or so in a couple of different sections, but it's been badly overgrown. The part that, uh, the part that my donkey and the horse is on, our, uh, a bunch of the fence was down, 
just from just years of rot and abandonment. Um, so I've been spending a tremendous amount of time working on getting that done. These are blocked off on the back. Somebody made them out of a sign. I don't know what kind of sign that is, but it's from the St. Louis, Missouri MFG company. I guess people don't like air blowing it or water blowing in the truck. So I'm probably going to lose all these screws. Hmm. Where can I put them? I guess I'll put them right in the headlight. Anyways, so that's what I've been doing a lot. And uh, most of my weekends have uh, revolved around that. Um, on another note, what I have also been doing is I've been recording a lot of the work that I've been doing. You know, fence rebuilding, tractor work. All that sort of stuff, and the reason being is that I'm going to, uh, at some point in time, probably in the late spring, early summer, I'm going to uh, launch a second YouTube channel. Now, this channel is going to have nothing to do with trucks, cars, or anything that you all are used to, so most of you probably won't care. This is going to be more directed towards, you know, the outdoorsy types that just like to watch, you know, work around the farm get done. The struggles of trying to maintain property and animals and all that crap. So, just wanted to let you know that's going to happen. So, I'm not going to open the channel up until I've got a substantial amount of uh, video. Probably, at least probably 10 full length videos. I made the mistake when I started this channel of uh, just starting right out with like one video. Yeah, that's going to take a little more substantial work. So starting out with one video is not ideal because people, myself included, when they see a new channel, uh, turning but not coming out. Anyways, when you see a new channel, you click on it and it's got like two videos or five videos, you're just like, uh, oh, they suck. Next, move on to the next one. So that's what I did with this channel, and I think that's kind of what, right from day one, kind of, as far as the YouTube algorithm went, kind of slowed me down, kind of worked the wrong direction, if you know what I mean. Um, what do I want to take off now? I guess I'll take the grill off. Hang on. Is that half? So like I was saying, I've been busy, but I'm not a uh, hot summertime kind of guy, and uh, this property gets overgrown severely bad in the summertime. So this section we're standing on now, I've got to get it where I can brush hog it within the next two months. Today is, what is it, the 18th or 19th of uh, January. So I got about two months to get it where I can feasibly use it, run a brush hog through without having problems. So it's going to take some time and effort. That's got a nut behind it. So did that one. And so does this one. Alright, what is that, a 7 16th? Give me a second. So if any of you fellers are into uh, watching another guy try to take back what Mother Nature has been reclaiming, you'll get the opportunity to do that. Just like what I'm doing now, you know, showing you what I'm working on. Ain't no different there. It's a different scope of work, you know. It's all work. It's all in a day's work. Uh, hope y'all can still hear me. Looks like my lights are still on. This grill is really in pretty good shape for a parts truck. It's way better than the one I got in my truck. 
or had in my truck, so not sure what I'm going to do there. Oops, didn't mean to drop that that hard. Because the this grill section is in a lot better shape. But I've got a ton of time and effort in the other one, so kind of don't want to just jump ship. So, I don't know. We'll decide. Do we want a uh, kind of a this color brushed silver kind of finish on the grill, or do we want a chrome one? I intend to take everything off this truck that's salvageable and then give the cab probably whatever I'm not going to use, just give it away. This thing is busted up pretty bad. I mean, I can fix it, fixing the one on, on my truck, but it's cut right through right here, so I don't know. That one might not make it. Oh, now we got a random 3 8 bolt over here. They ain't making it easy on me. Okay, let me go get a 3 8 socket. Let's see. I bet you I could sell this grill for probably six, seven hundred bucks, but that ain't gonna happen. So I know once it's gone, it'll be gone forever. And just my luck, I'll sell this chrome grill or sell the other one and then I'll crash my truck and need it. That's how that works. All right. We'll figure out what we're gonna do next. Well, if a fella had been using his head for something other than a, uh, a hat rack, I would have grabbed a flashlight because I can't see nothing under here. Like I told you before, that camera picks up light better than my eyes pick up light. I don't know if that's just age or what, but it's actually darker than it looks. And I can't see a bolt. That one? I don't know. Could be a bolt. The only light I got is the one on the uh, camera I'm recording with. And it don't help my drill is about wore out. I don't recommend disassembling trucks out in the woods. You drop one of these bolts, it's just gone forever. Some genius figured it would be a good idea to put one of these bolts right directly above the headlight bucket instead of like here. So I'm going to have to get a wrench on that one. And then they, uh, same genius, I assume, put a, a wire clamp on it. <coughs> Unfortunately, the light doesn't come on unless you're pulling the trigger. How much sense does that make? Yeah, this thing's not in great shape. About like me, huh? Okay, got one more after this. This is not a hammer drill, actually. Oh, come on. Look at her smoking. She's throwing fire out. The old Walmart special, Black & Decker, is almost done. Oh, come on. Yeah. Gotta get a ratchet. That one's awfully tight. Hmm. These bolts going into this aluminum channel uh, got some rust on them. Boy, I'm glad I found this truck. Fifteen hundred bucks. Pretty good score. The thing I'm going to build with uh, 
the remains of this truck are about the goofiest thing I ever thought of in my life, probably. Half of you will probably hate me for it. The other half will probably think it's pretty funny. Okay. Would you believe another screw? Oh, one more to come ratchet off of there. Not sure how that's going to work. It's a little stripped. Bring you right back. I've actually stumbled onto quite a few uh, differences between the 78 that I'm restoring and this 79 here. And you wouldn't think, especially towards the end of a model year type deal, or a design, uh, that there would be that many differences. But there are just weird ones too, like, uh, for example, the clutch. The clutch on my other truck is cable operated, and this one is... Uh, what was it? Now I'm going to catch me lying. Hang on. Okay, yeah, I wasn't crazy. This one has a uh, solid rod mechanical linkage, so why would one be cable operated and one not? Could be the transmission, I guess, but I wouldn't think. Difference between a 10 speed and a 13. Got two batteries in it. It's 20 bucks worth of cores. Well, if I pull this off, then Mother Nature is going to get in here. But it doesn't really matter, I guess. I guess I'll pull the other one off on the other side. Well, this one's going to actually be uh, super easy to take off because most of the uh, tabs are broke off. But I got this one screw I've already broke loose. And uh, the little one that was there that I had trouble with on the other side. Then a wiring harness. This will be done. Okay. Boy, it just kills me to whack a truck in the head like this. But I guess the people that really whacked it in the head were the ones that wrecked it, right? And then, I guess, claimed it on insurance or whatever it is they done. Really can't blame it on me, I suppose. Alright. Yes. This is busted off. That one's busted off. That one's broke off. This one that I just took off is actually broke. I could fix it, but... I don't know why. I'll just save it in case I ever crash my truck. Well, as a fella could see, we just about run out of light. I would like to get these, uh, can't hardly see them, using my drill light there. would like to get these little lights out. I have two uh, for my truck. Um, these have all the uh, little deals in the inside of them. Looks like they're all broke out. Pretty typical. That one's got a cracked lens. Those are pretty hard to find. Pretty much all the trucks back in the day had them, I guess. Before my time, so you old-timers have to correct me. I didn't mean that like you're old, but you know what I mean. Let's see if I can get a ratchet and pop those off. Have to use the old light function. Actually, it works pretty good because I can see the bolt I'm trying to get out. Now, fun fact, the only ratchet I brought out here with me that's a half-inch drive is not a ratchet. The thing fell out of it, the switcheroo deal, and uh, now it's a breaker bar. It's just locked halfway in between both. So, not sure how that happens. Usually a ratchet breaks and the, the teeth just go, you know what I mean? Golly! I already cheated. I broke this loose off-camera. Didn't figure you wanted to see me do this any longer than you had to anyways. So, gotta apologize for the kind of the lack of quality content ah, this week. But, ah, whew, 
I've been really busy. You have to forgive me. Golly. I'm about to hurt myself, I think. Are you about off of there, sweet pea? Excuse me. My socket's kind of stuck a little bit. A lot of rust on there. I bet nobody, no, nobody's even watching now, huh? Why am I out here? Why am I out here in the dark? Trying to get a bolt out that clearly doesn't want to. Some idiot. Yeah. Didn't bring no penetrating oil. Didn't bring a ratchet. The ratchets. Talk about bringing a uh, slingshot to a gunfight. And I don't got the horsepower or my breaker bar, my long breaker bar, to bust it loose. Oh, man. I guess on that note, we'll head back to the house.